Ah, uh, good afternoon. Hi there. It's William here, speaking from England, from Lincolnshire. This is a little video clip for all my farmer friends in Tenerife, and I hope you're all well and enjoying life. I thought I'd just have a little walk round part of the farmyard, and so you can see the sort of things I get up to. There's the farm cat. There should be another one somewhere. They are so important to me. The cats keep the vermin under control, particularly the mice. I never ever get rid of the mice. And down here, we've got a good plum crop this year. Here's some of the early plums. The other side of this wall, I have a small protected garden down here and you can see there's some sweet corn, some squashes, some beans and some beetroot and even some vines, but you can't see them. This building here, uh, is part of a range of old traditional brick built buildings made in the 1850s so they're about 150 years old um, they're no use today for modern agriculture but I keep them just for storage uh, and they'll come in use for one day down here this is what I particularly like it's great fun look at this this is just for Pepe I know he likes growing his seeds and his trees these are seedlings from the elm tree now back in the 1970s in the late 1970s we had dutch elm disease come into this country and in the 1980s 99.9 percent .9 of all the trees all the elm trees in the uk and much of europe died now it is possible to find occasionally elm trees which for some reason have survived and what i've done is gathered seeds from these trees and I've named whereabouts they come from. This comes from the village of Tattershall. And these are the seedlings which have grown and they look quite healthy. There's some more here from, these are from Dunkirk Road and that's in the middle of Lincoln. I found two or three elm trees there. And these, gosh, there's a lot here. Look at all these. These are from an elm tree, not far away from where I am in a village. I've found these. Now just because the parent has shown some resistance to Dutch elm doesn't automatically mean that these will have complete resistance, but I hope they will do. I'm gonna pot them up like I've done these other trees in the past and I'll plant them out on the farm or I'll give them away to other farmers who want them. Right, let's have a walk across here. These are the farm storage buildings that you see. They're all empty at the minute, except for a little bit of oilseed rape in one of them. And I hope over the next six weeks to fill them with wheat and barley uh, and the rest of the oilseed rape. This is the farm loader with his extendable arms. And this grey gadget at the front is the pusher that I use. So when a trailer tips a load in the shed, I can push it up much higher in the, in the heap. Uh, it's something I made many years ago in the workshop. There's the extendable arms. The Teleship 404. And in this shed over here, we have got oil seed rape. In fact, there's been two late loads being brought in. There's been two loads being brought in already today. And you've probably not seen oil seed rape before. You'll notice the walls at the side of these uh, buildings are, uh, are, are zinc uh, profile uh, pressure walls. They, I can stack the crop really quite high and there's no risk of the walls being broken. I'll just show you what oil seed rape is like. There we are. On my hand you can see there. Tiny, tiny little seeds. This goes to London. It's a special variety of oil seed rape and it's crushed and there's about 40 44% oil, good quality oil. It's oil that's used by McDonald's. They only insist on the best. And the cake, after it's been crushed, goes as cattle feed. And you can see that the floor that it's on is a false floor with holes in here. And I can blow air underneath this floor. It goes through the crop and takes the moisture out of the door. Now most of the crop this time of year does tend to be dry but these last two or three loads have been a bit wet and I'll have to have the fan on maybe for the next week or ten days just to take some moisture 
out of the crop to get it down to the specification that it's been sold for. This is the tunnel down the middle of the shed and there's a fan house at the back of the shed and this tunnel gets pressurized and then I can open vents in the floor which let the air through the crop. I'll just walk down to the end of the shed and in this shed altogether at the minute I've probably got about 150 tons there's some more to come in yet. You can see I stack it up quite high, um, sort of about three meters high altogether. And that's what I use the pusher for, to push it all the way up to this height. And I will sell this and it will probably go out the, off the farm, maybe December, January, February time. Um, and I look forward to getting the check for it as well. It'll help to pay some of the bills. Anyway, I hope everybody's well in Tenerife. Here's the farm cat, it's followed me out here and I look forward to seeing you all in the winter. Okay, bye bye.